Hello and welcome to the Singularity Syndicate podcast. I'm Naja Faisal. Today we delve into a thought-provoking discussion with Michael Magruch, an artist, speaker, and educator who challenges conventional perceptions of AI's role in our lives. We'll explore his views on the human-centric application of AI, its impact on society, and how art can offer unique insights into our relationship with technology. And now, here's Michael Magruch. Hello, Michael. How are you? Hi, Nasha. Good to see you. Thanks for, thanks for being on the program. Uh, first of all, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to whoever is listening and whoever is celebrating. Um, so you have such an interesting profile. I've been looking at your, your stuff that you put out on the Internet. You have like a, a well, um, well-designed website with a lot of in, in informative content. And um, and I'm really curious about you to just you know tell, tell us a little bit about your journey, your background, if you may. Yeah, uh, I was born in Vienna, Austria. Uh, I was a sick child. Uh, went to school when I was seven. Couldn't understand a word. Uh, couldn't regurgitate anything. Understood the, the the content, but couldn't regurgitate because I'm not linear. I'm I'm, I'm neurodiverse, very very neurodiverse. I wrote six books, and I have to. Still have the computer read them to me. And um, so I can read text, obviously, but I cannot read, you know, when I do context, long context and stuff, uh, I need to have the computer read it to me. Um, uh, because my brain doesn't function just by reading. I have to listen to it, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I could never fit into systems. I have eight years of school and I think probably two of those I repeated because I'm not a lazy person, but I want to you know, get through it and listen to what the system tells me to push through, you know, be strong, you know, uh, and all this. And I tried till I was 50, to, uh, you know, and I, I had some system success, but it never fulfilled me. And uh, when I was 50, I wrote my last book, uh, uh, Smart of Art, where I segregated art from the art product and the art creation. Because I couldn't figure out why 99, 98% of artists worldwide are poor. And then I found that only 1% of podcasters make all the profit of podcasting, of 98% of podcasting. Then I found out that uh, uh, viral videos make, uh, you know, makes uh, very few viral videos make, 1% makes also 97, 98% of all the profit of viral videos. Then I heard uh, Snoop Dogg saying that he just had a billion downloads, uh, you know, uh, and he made $42,000. But everybody on social media and everybody talks about billions, millions and, and everything. And most of the people I talk to, they can't even, you know, so, you know, they can hardly pay, buy their, 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 their rent and stuff, which is, by the way, another fact, so 65% of Americans which is the richest country, right, uh, uh, can have to live paycheck by paycheck. So we do a extremely thing. Everything is about selling, 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 selling. And I, you know, I'm very, because remember the time when computers came and everybody said, hey, Naja, Michael, what are you guys doing? Now you have a computer. What are you going to do with all the time and all the money the computer is going to make you? And it's true. Our output per person, you know, average output per person rose eight times as high. But nobody has eight times more time. Nobody has eight times more money. So AI is the same thing. It will be, you know, a lot of things computer did what humans did. So you don't need humans anymore. So AI will be the same thing. It will just do uh, do a system work that we have to do, like filling out forms, you know, uh, sending out emails, making a form letter. So the very basic that really isn't worth anything, 
because right. I don't care really when I get an email of you, I'm not going to kick out. Oh, Nasha could have written this better. Nobody thinks about it. We don't even read the emails. We fly over it. Right. No, definitely. We're going to talk a lot about AI in this episode. Um, yeah. I just want to know your initial thoughts when um, when you first start uh, using ChatGPT. What what went into your mind? Were you like scared? How what, what were you feeling? Did you did you did your thoughts or position on AI were the same when you first start using ChatGPT versus now, one year after? Like I say, Naja, like what they promised us with the computer, right? I wasn't afraid of the computer and I wasn't afraid of AI. And I'm totally now not afraid of AI uh, because, because AI, my first, uh, and I don't know was ChatGPT, whatever, when it came out, when, when the AI came out, I put in, in the best graphic, that might've been ChatGPT, I don't know. I think ChatGPT is free or something. And I put in, okay, I want to see what they do human because I'm very, I cannot fit into system. I'm not system relevant. I can connect with humans really well. And that saved my life. So I said, I want to just put in a word into the AI. And I want to see what they graphically express to me. And the word was, and I chose that word because I thought, what would be a real human world? So Nasha, hello, right? Hello. Hello would be a great word and i put in give me graphically and i and, and i thought okay they show me nausea what why shaking a person a woman a man saying hi you know and what i got is i got six images uh one woman that looked like a cat one man that looked like a cat and four others like cats and I, and I said, first I was like, what the hell? And then I found out, then I, it came to me. It, it, it took a while, but it came to me. Hello Kitty. In computer language, you know, Hello Kitty is the most used, uh, you know, uh, anime, you know, uh, image. And because that was more prevalent than hello, saying hello to another human, which is not which I can't even believe that, that that is not important. But in the digital world, hello is connected to Hello Kitty, not to say, hello, Naja, how are you doing? <laughs> you know? And um, and that was, and then I was just not doing it. And then people kept saying, no, it got so much better and whatever. So the next thing I did was I did, uh, what is that famous program? I, I, you know, that's my nerd, I don't remember. Mind, Miss M, uh, for, for drawing? Mid-journey. Mid-journey, okay. So I used mid-journey. I put in the prompt. I said, I need a, two, a, a minimal two-dimensional uh, image of nature that is in a circle. A two dimension, just uh, as a graphic, a graphic design, just not painting. Not, it made me 20 images, different ones, all ornate drawing. Yeah, I say it's simple and minimal. It could not get that. It could not make me a simple two circles, and one is nature, you know, and then have nature images around, and then one is human and has, you know, uh, or system, whatever. And it couldn't make that. It was impossible. And I changed the prompts to, the, to, to a gazelle. And that showed me how limited it is. If you have to just say, you know, make me a, a cat or paint me a cat or paint me a dog or paint me a human that smiles, that's so generic. You know, that's not unique. That's not uniquely you. And we all live life because we are one of 8 billion, everyone. We have one of eight. We are not like eight billion. We are one of eight. Billion. We even look and look at your family. We look at life differently. Even look at your family. Everybody, you are in the same family, and everybody has a different look on life. Yeah. So all you do. That's why you want fresh and new and exciting things, because you want to find what is resonating with you. 
And that's why you try things. You say, oh, this is the new thing. You know, you got to try it. You try it and you don't resonate. But other people totally resonate with it. So this is why we need to find more of who we are. And I think AI will never be that. It will never help you. That's true. Um, I also find it the same. Like, uh, I think um, AI struggles with understanding concepts that are um, kind of deep. Like, for example, if I tell you what is creativity, right? Like, creativity is a concept uh, that maybe creativity to you is different than creativity to me. If I ask you what is love, love is to you different than what loves to me, right? It is. So we have, as you said, we are one in a, in a billion or one in, in eight, eight billion. Eight, one eight, eight, one eight of billion. eight billion. Yeah. So we are very unique uh, in our interpretations of these uh, concepts. Yeah. And I think AI is going to struggle continuously with understanding when we say concepts like these that are very personal. It's gonna. It's not gonna be able to to understand them and and to give us exactly what we want in that regard. However, we shouldn't be discounting the fact that this is an incredible achievement to be able oh, to yeah. create mm -hmm. um, create this kind of technology that first understands our human language and um, and then produce um, produce this kind of like in your department. I know you're an artist, so. Um, you know, I think the, the conversation today is going to be focused a lot on, on art and visual expression, right? Um, so to be, have a machine that you could tell it, oh, give me a dog on the moon and it will put it together in a fairly realistic fashion. Um, I think it's a testament of how far have we, we came as human beings, don't you think? I think systemically, yes, because... But we are not aware, see, we allowed systems to be more intricate than us. For example, we, obviously we created cars that can run faster than us, right? Nobody was upset about that technology because people understood it. You don't need a horse to draw you because you, you know, a car can drive you. And, that, and that's very well because we will still very aware of all the things it does. We know a car is faster than us, uh, but now it's thinking. And in thinking is the thinking in system, all the complicated thinking is systemically. So if you want to understand the government, you've got to be really a specialist for government. Now there, AI is going to be unbeatable. You want to understand law, those are systems. Language is a system. So the difference between a language, languages, you know, whatever, you know, those people, a couple of people, they say, okay, this is a horse. Yeah. But in German, they say it's a Pferd, you know, and in, in things, they say something else, you know, Cavallo. Yeah? They say different words. So th the same has a different, has a system definition. But we humans have been given creation of art. So if you and I just right now draw a, 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 a horse on a piece of paper, the whole world, 8 billion people, they might not say, that, oh, that's horrible how they guys draw that, yeah? but they all will understand that you and I drew a horse. No system. Do you understand how much power that is? And, and, and it never, it's always looking at the form of art, but not of the power of art to communicate. I mean, imagine this, you and I can sing right now. We don't have to learn a language or anything. And the whole world can see is a sad song or is a happy song. I mean, imagine that power. You have the power to interact without the internet, you know, to 8 billion people right now. I mean, how more powerful can, so we shouldn't give all our parts, oh, we got to learn this. We got to have AI to be, you know, to be Naja, Michael, we got to be like, we don't. And that's why the power of podcasting is so great because people want human interaction. That's why I always am so for human centricity 
because human centricities, all our powers with nature, you know, and we are the gods of all systems. So we created technology and AI and governments and religions and spirituality. Those are all systems created by humans. So why would you submit to the systems, but be aware of it, like you were aware of the car driving, and we don't need horses anymore. Be aware what you do with 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 uh, with uh, AI, and be aware that humans are uh, aesthetically so uh, aware that they're not gonna say, "Oh my God, we all have no money, and we all in lack, and it's never enough, and whatever." So we need to manipulate to get what we want. We need to make wars. We need to get AI to do mean things. We need weapons not to cut, but to hurt people. It's, it's, we get into the thing when we systemically put ourselves in a crisis where you couldn't be you and I couldn't be me. So we got to do something to be, you know, to be relevant because insist we are relevant by nature, obviously, because nature doesn't make mistakes. That's why 8 billion unique people. But in systems, we have to think. So it's not AI ever. It's the humans need to be aware to be able to have AI and use it to help all people, you know? I have a question for you. Imagine you are the main decision maker at a company like OpenAI before you release ChatGPT. And your team comes to you saying, hey, Michael, you know, we, we discovered a breakthrough in technology and we have this product called ChatGPT that we are planning to release to the market. We have also DALI and Midjourney, all of this stuff. Imagine you are the decision maker mm -hmm. and then your task is to approve or disapprove to release these products to humanity. Would you release them or would you not? Yes, I would release him. And I, I tell you how, what I do, mm -hmm. I would say if AI is so good, I want you technicians to make it so that we can use AI to figure out if human consciousness is ready, like it was ready to create a car that was running faster than us. Are we, can we create the same awareness in humans with that great technology? Because if that technology is really so great, you know, then I say, you know, all the stuff that they put in wars right now, right? Uh, uh, they, they put in all the technology in wars. And I said, why not using that technology to prevent wars? Why are we still having wars? Why can we not decide on, on uh, use all that money and technology because there's so much money? I mean, we... Uh, making money, tax money, right? And our government system is taking that ma uh, money in the name of defense to give it our tax money to other to kill people. So if I say, do you know that your tax money is killing other humans? And I think a lot of people would say, no, I don't want to use my, I want to use my money for infrastructure, for for, you know, uh, for, you know, the poverty, people have poverty, people have suffer in our country, not, not even going into another country. That's why I pay tax to my government. But I'm not paying tax to my government that they say in the name of defense, because war is defense. It's always defense. You can always spin war into defense. And they said, they need to defend themselves. And that's why I say, okay, let's get billions and trillions of new ships and whatever, just to defend ourselves. From what? Humans are one, one eight million people. They are one, especially with the internet now. So I would say absolutely, uh, I would never think, but I say, if AI is that good, then I want to see how AI avoids wars, future wars, how AI is showing or teaching us or making us aware what it can do and what it can't do. And not just saying, let's try it and fi figure out. Like Tesla has to recall, I think, all their cars right now because of whatever. I mean, the, the, you can't just think, I'm throwing everything out and, and, and it, will, it, it will just somehow survive.
you know? So, yeah. So I, I, I really like what you're saying. I am personally a very human centric. I, I never ask anybody about their race, religion. I don't care. No. I treat people as humans, no matter where they're coming from. I, this is something has been with me for a long time. And, um, and I always wondered why do we still have conflict? Why do we still have uh, borders between countries and nations? I mean, and I really hope that AI would uh, would help us in this regard. Do you believe that um, we might reach that point of singularity? That, as you notice, my podcast is called Singularity Syndicate. Mm -hmm. Do you think, um, first of all, the, uh, for the audience to understand, singularity is a point where it's kind of the black hole of intelligence where it uh, the intelligence of these systems will exponentially rise until it um it the distance between the human intelligence and artificial intelligence becomes so wide then we don't really understand anymore what is um ai is doing it's kind of like it sucks into all the intelligence of the world um do you think that this is possible Mm. Yeah, it's to, to first of all, we talked 8 billion people and every, our brain is a hundred billion or a 10 billion uh, connections. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure a hundred, hundred yeah, ten yeah. billion. So it's way more than AI even can imagine, you know? So it's going to be a storage factor, you know, a quantum computer factor uh, issue. And if it, I don't know what it should do. I mean, I, I, I don't know what the advantage would be to collect all the stuff because for me, what's important is what systems are what do, doing system, not, 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 not the system leaders and systems, they, uh, fix his, history. So they rewrite, you know, Disney is rewriting their stories. And I think what is very important for humanity is, that we say, yes, we were Nazis. We were doing this. We killed all these people. And now we are different. We, you know, we, we smoked cigarettes in maternity wards that women, uh, calmed down, you know, because they had, you know, uh, had the kids. We got to see that history because we got to see we, this is where we came from and this is where we are now. We also need the, uh, uh the connection of nature, you know, uh, to, so, I would use AI and any technology to get us closer to nature, to understand nature better. So, for example, we still don't understand how water gets from a tree into the leaves. Gallons of water against gravity. We still haven't figured it out. But we have figured out stuff to uh, change our DNA uh, to, to be better than nature. That is, you see that? That's, that's, one is a business and one is, is a, a wise uh, you know, awareness and wisdom. And humans need awareness and wisdom. It's not about the money. People think, oh, it's all about the money. No, it's about the wisdom. Because without wisdom, all the money doesn't help you. You know, and all the technology doesn't help you. It's not the technology either. You use the technology to prevent wars, to prevent abuse, and say, what can we do to get our, uh, uh, awareness of humanity that we don't need to use AI to hurt people, that we don't need to make wars to kill people, to not, uh, to not allocate the money from wars and technology uh, uh, taken away from people that really need it, that can't even feed themselves. You know, use that technology for that first, because then when people feel better, they have more money, they are more willing. When you feel fulfilled, you spend more money, you know, when you feel, hey, I have a good life, you are more generous, you donate. I mean, this, this totally does the, 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 the humanity. I love what you're talking about. Last year, I spent a lot of um, uh, soul searching and reflection and try to identify <laughs> really what is the core purpose? Why do I exist personally? And, and I think, you know, there's nothing more worthy of dedicating someone's life is to really expanding our human conscious consciousness yeah. it's a mystery man every every day i look at myself like you look at your hands and life is a is a mystery of course some people believe in religion and and like religion will but religion does not provide all the answers 
I feel there's a lot of mystery right now. And, and as uh, you know, um, Hitchhike um, uh, to the Galaxy, I think that's that book that Elon Musk talks a lot about, that talks about, you know, I think we're, 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 we don't have the ability to ask even the right questions. You know, I think, and, and the ultimate purpose is really expand our human consciousness so that we understand why we're here and like why there's life here and like is there life anywhere else so these are like really existential questions that as you said they are like more important than money more important and, and if we contribute a little bit to the human evolution the best thing you could wish for really is to really try to expand that human consciousness um i want to uh, switch the conversation now a little bit to your work and how you're integrating ai within your work i know that you're an artist what 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 is the thing that you do really and how you're integrating these tools within your day-to-day -day life i use ai to experience ai i don't use it for my work <laughs> i tried it you know i keep trying cloud 2 and all this stuff but i'm not i did a lot with writing you know, and I found it takes way too much uh, time for me to look through the results. And even if I see, oh my God, it's well written, much better than I could write, but it is not my words. And my words, uh, one of 8 billion people has my words. And especially with me being born in Austria and having learned English as a second language, the way how I express me and why people like me or why people resonate with me is because I express myself my way. So I can't say, okay, you make it better. I don't have my, my value is in my uniqueness. My value is not to make something. Uh, if I was a lawyer, it would be a different, you know, obviously it would be also me because the lawyer, the best lawyers that really get the money are the one that play with laws, with the spirit of law and the letter of law. But, it's, it's, I mean, the absolutely ma most value that you can have as a human is your singularity, is your exploring how you express yourself. Also knowing that you can do. So if you come say, uh, and say, Michael, can you do uh, accounting for me? I said, no. Can you do taxes for me? No. I have the hardest time even to comprehend taxes and, and, and all that stuff. Uh, when you say, hey, Michael, can you write me something for AI? I said, no. But I can use AI and, exp and experience it. So I use AI to experience because I feel that humanity needs to look at any technology. And, and this is my next book is, is about technology and AI, how humans should use that, which we talked about a little bit about today, is uh, instead of giving themselves up, because when you look at, you know, war, for example, you look at that stuff, it's like, we never look at war from a human centric point, we only try to understand it through uh, uh, system relevance. So what people did, you know, you go in the back when Marcus Aurelius was in wars, and you go back and, and, and look at Trojan wars and all that stuff, you know. And when I go back to wars, I look and say, no, humans never wanted wars. I know I never know a human that wants a war. And, that, and then, then I say, why am I saying this? And then I look at nature and I see, when you have a fight, it's about f food, which is very short in nature. When animals fight, about it's about food or a leadership. And they, sh they and the moment they get, oh, Najah is stronger than me. The moment I get that, you get in the same moment that you are weaker than me or, or, or you are stronger than me. So we both get the same message and we go apart. We don't keep investing into, into fighting each other. And when I see that, then I say, oh my God. And everybody's afraid of war because it's not human. It's not, war is not human. So we are afraid of war and nobody looks at it from a human centric way. Like AI, everybody looks about, oh, I can't make more money. I finally can make money. No, you can't. AI doesn't make you money. And AI has never promoted that makes you money. It says it can do a lot of things, but the money you have to make. 
And if everybody has the same emails, nobody has an advantage. And, and the law, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of things in AI because it's a, it's a technology where you don't have uh, priority rights. You know, you, you don't have like a, a customer uh, list, you know, of very rich, uh, you know, humans that need a, uh, need a consultation or something. So you have nothing that is special. Everybody has everything. And so it will be just a flash in the pan. It will be helpful, you know, in a lot of things where you have to say, oh, it took us so much to get through all the genes and it took us so much to do this. It will amplify that and make it faster. But anything that's interesting, that is especially you, it's not gonna help you. It, 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 is, it is not gonna help you. You can, if you wanna research and say, oh my God, I wanna research about, but whatever, uh, Lego, you know, Lego pieces. It tells you the whole story about Lego pieces, you know, how they started and what they did. But it's it, it just does, it's good for if you say what did the people do in with you know before the Hoover Dam, how many dams were there done and how many how long did dams actually collapse and not work and why did they not work? For this AI is the best. You will look at, at architecture and you look at all the things, how humans took to develop, get to a standard that we have now, you know, and did they make mistakes or not? How they build pyramids. Those things are phenomenal for AI. They are old, uh, uh, you know, uh, data that is re reshuffled, resorted. There's nothing better than AI for this. Nothing. There's, and it would be a waste for human to go through it. Because you have a machine doing it, why would you use your life to, to go through it? You can do much more, you know, before you could just do perhaps the, the first step of AI in your whole lifetime. Now you can do, so this is great. This is great for AI. But, but what does it do human-centrically? Very little. Because life is about finding who you are. It's everybody has the everybody has one life with one different view, eight billion people, and you find your yourself also through other people. So I'm saying things on this podcast that I haven't said before because of you, Naja. You know, and and, and, and you, fulfillment is always found through other humans, even if we fight. That that's how you find fulfillment. You not find it with any system accolades. You're not finding it. So, oh, if I would have an Oscar, it would justify my whole life. Never does. If, if you work hard or you work nothing and you get the Oscar, the Oscar has nothing to do. It's an icing on the cake for the person that, uh, that just doesn't care. And for the person that just worked for the Oscar, it's just a big disappointment because the day after the Oscar, you have to keep working and find who you are. Yeah. When I hear you speak, uh, <clears throat> I relate a lot to what you're saying. Um, yeah. I'm also not, not um, like I'm also born and raised in Lebanon. English is my second yeah. language. And you're right. Like I have a unique way of writing emails, unique way of communicating with my friends and all of that stuff. And I tried it. Like I will put my, my email into chat GPT and then. I will get, as you said, a, a sophisticated, well-written email, but it doesn't have my spirit. It doesn't have the way I communicate. Yeah. And yeah. it's funny because I, I could discover if, if the other person have texted me or sent me an email using AI, I can, I can sense it. Me, because me, I, you know, we have yeah. a relationship with this person. I know how he writes to me or she writes to me, right? So mm -hmm. when this email, the tone and all of that structure of that email, I can feel it that they're using yeah. AI, and I think it it um, it breaks that personal connection that I have with that person, mm -hmm. and I think that's a limitation. On mm -hmm. the other side, I have to say and confess that after using AI, I find I find that whatever I can do, I can do ten times faster. So AI can, in my personal experience, it helps me a lot with brainstorming, you know, the blank page. Let's say you have 
a task, you want to draw something and you want to start something, a project, um, it's always nice to brainstorm this with, with somebody. Now, we are living in a place where everybody's working from home in isolation. Yeah. Um, and now you have a digital entity available 24-7 that can start that brainstorming with you. It can start that um, idea bouncing. It can help you out with the structure. Sometimes, you know, if you're working on something and you forget a very crucial point, so now AI is helping you. So I feel it's a net positive outcome. It's a net positive outcome. My life is better for the most part from AI, not only because of work, also on the personal side. Like if you get into a, an argument with a friend or, or, and then instead of letting your emotions, your rage, your anger to like go and like spit all that stuff on the other person, I find it very much healing to really tell ChatGPT what I'm feeling and ask it to clarify what I'm feeling. And then ask it to to send a message back, for example, to that person. And it, it can save relationships. It can literally save relationships because we are humans. And sometimes, yes, we are one in eight billion, but the AI is neutral, emotionally neutral. And sometimes you need that emotional neutrality to be able to be an effective member of society because sometimes, you know, it only takes one bad word that you say to somebody to break that relationship. And especially when we rely a lot on texting and on sending text form, I feel that ChatGPT plays a crucial role here in like really saving a lot of these relationships. Do you, do you, do you, do you have similar experiences? I have hundred percent the, the same experiences you have. I just do it in a different way. So, uh, it's very important. Number one, we need to know that when I text or email, it's 4% to 11% communication. If I'm talking to you not right now, it's not more than 36%. It's never a hundred. Even we, we, it's, it's probably less than 36%. So if we in person meet, we communicate a 36% of what we want to commute. We understand. And because we using a system, uh, if I express an art, if I sing to you, that's why when you see a movie, it touches you deeply, because if I sing to you, I have more impact than you in the, in, 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 if I sing halfway, okay, then, then if I just speak to you, because speaking is a, a system. What we do with systems is I write things and instead of asking AI, I just go do something else and come back to the writing. And for me, is it's the same, uh, has the same results like you. When you have, uh, 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 you need, humans need, you know, we are, we are in a duality. We need a uh, bouncing back, you know, we need uh, a feedback. And when we give, uh, we use a system like uh, a AI for asking, hey, I have, a, I have a discourse with this person. We thought about this. It gives you like a third person uh, an input. And for me, I use it not for, for a conflict. I use it for writing. So I write something and then instead of asking GPT right now, I come back to my writing and then edit it. And then I come again back and edit it, which is basically the same time because with the, I even costs more because I get five. Uh, five different versions of what I ask. So when the first version doesn't work, I click repeat. Remember. So when you when when you say, "Hey, can you make a, a can you make one paragraph of this?" So then I put that in ChatGPT, and then it makes one paragraph of this. And then I said, mm, "Doesn't sound like me." Again, again, again. Then I see something in the third paragraph to take it out, and see this takes too much time for me. I rather do the first one go away come back in an hour next day, keep editing, go away, write further, come back to the front, re-edit. And it keeps more as it's for me, that costs less time, but I'm a writer, you know, I write a lot. So 
I understand to use it, f what you said, and as well as me. But I say, for me, it takes still too much time. For you, and it, for you, I totally agree. That's the perfect thing, to use it like that. But no, yeah. see, be aware why you need to use it like that, because basically it's about you. Because when you get ChatGPT and ChatGPT, oh, go over to her and kiss her. And you said, that would be totally wrong, you know? <laughs> or 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 ask her that you are the biggest asshole and you should be punished or whatever. And you have to still feel it and tweak it and perhaps use another word. You know, but basically we use ChatGPT to you know, if we use it in interhuman connections to be purely us. Again, the one of eight billion. It's all your power, your money, everything is in your uniqueness. It's never in what you do like others. And if you do that and make money, then you're manipulating everybody. You're not you. Because if you yeah. just think I'm gonna use a chat GPT to, 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 to hustle money and stuff, and you know, do me this and get me more into this and this, you are manipulating the whole system and then you waste your life because it's life is to finding yourself. That's why we, we live to find who you are. So you're an artist and a writer. Do you foresee yeah. a future where um, where an AI version of you could write a better book than you write? Or an AI version of you could 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 produce art better than you, you do? And what yeah. if, what if one day you know, AI becomes so powerful that it can, like people prefer you consuming a, 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 a movie that was generated by AI instead of a movie that's generated by folks in Hollywood. Because right now we're very close into having AI being able to generate movie on demand. Like you can say, I want a movie about a, a kid growing out in Austria and, and immigrated to the US and then AI could plot a whole movie a uh, hollywood level and and then and then give it to you on demand do you think that um jobs in the in the art industry in the um writing we're gonna lose a lot of jobs are we gonna do you do you think that humans will less and less have um jobs i think uh there's, there's a lot in this question. There's a lot in there because number one, the answer is, uh, would you like, uh, I, I wouldn't because humans are growing all the time. So even if I put you in prison, you grow. Humans are growing all the time. So uh, the other thing is, so, so humans are all the time. When you see on Microsoft, the, I have these, you know, nature pictures they are now going through an AI and they all look artificial. Every nature picture, because I have photographs of mine, you know, on my desktop, completely different. And, and it's the same nature, Salt, Salzburg, you know, Vienna, photos, horrible in AI. Like you said, you feel it when your friends use AI. And our feeling of uniqueness is lifting because we use AI. So if we wouldn't have AI, we wouldn't be sensing it. Or the most sensitive people like you and me wouldn't sense it. But now we sense it. So this is number one. So so I don't believe, I think it couldn't, kind of, couldn't make it. Yeah, so what? Uh, I think that we need also for my image and my voice, the copyright. You cannot... This is, a, this is an, a one thing that has to be, uh, you cannot take some one of one of 8 billion people and copy them. You cannot, that you must not, you cannot use his voice, his image, you know, the, the, you know the, what they do already in movies where they take uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and you know, make him scenes, which they have done already, things like that uh, for a while now. But we, we, we are not supposed, if you're not an actor, you're not supposed to, unless you sign it away. But you, you, you shouldn't be, uh, because it's already enough violation when you are on the street and somebody makes a photo and you are on the street. But that's, we all know that's 
how far we go. We shouldn't go farther than that, that you, you're in a crowd of people in, in an open space and you are on it. Okay, bad luck. Yeah, but it shouldn't go further than this. The other thing is AI is, uh, needs to be stamped. There needs to be a watermark. Everything that's created by AI, there must be a way to find what is the origin. That is stamped to be an eye because we cannot, the problem is, and the reason why I say that is when humans get used, you know, young kids get used to, uh, find, um, AI as normal as human, they forget their humanity. So what I say, when I see kids on the phone, you know, when I see a bunch of kids, they are in a jacuzzi. And mostly women, men don't do this so much, but women that are 12, 10, 12 years, they're in the jacuzzi with their thing. I see old people in the, on their phone, you know, in the sun, it's beautiful, California, you know, it's sun, it's beautiful, the air is fresh, everything, now in fall, people on the phone. And, but the, re, the reason, and, and, and this is awareness, why I say awareness is more important than money and business and everything. When I tell these kids, I said, the re it's okay to be on the phone. I just want to tell you why you're on the phone. And just keep that in mind while you're using the phone. That you're on the phone because this is, we are herd animals, social herd animals. We are all one family, a human family. And the reason this is our, and we are so segregated, you're a ballet dancer when you're a kid. You're a writer, you're a musician, you're all this stuff. We're so segregated. We don't feel connected to the tribe. And the iPhone connects us to the tribe, to the artificial tribe. That is not fine. But if you are aware that you do this, your whole perception of using that phone is going to be different. And I said, don't go and play games on the freaking thing because games you can play anywhere. Go when you use the, the iPhone to talk to another person. Don't talk to uh, an AI. Talk to another person. Because this is natural. This is our natural being. We need to use technology like we, you and I do, because we are full, both fulfilled when we talk to another human being. And there's a lot of magic in, 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 in podcasting because people that listen are listening to relate to you and me in the talk that you and I have, instead of getting information that is made by 20 people, like in a news, uh, in a newscast and have no clue what they're listening to and why they, they're just, so they're, they're more interactive with us because they can, with their six senses, you and I can, you know, connect with our six senses. We don't know each other before. And we just hook it in, like we know each other for a hundred years. And, and then people have the same, get that from podcasting. And this is the human centric thing of podcasting that I wanted to always uh, point out. And so the, you say, uh, the movies, I'm telling you one thing. What the, this is the third thing, because your question was so good. This is the third thing of, of your question. What I already experienced. I was the guy that watched three movies a day. I went into triple features. I started beginning of that, didn't have a lot of money. Went to the other movies, saw the, the, the whole movie, then went back and saw the end on the others. I saw three, two to three movies every time I went to the movies. And I went at least twice or three times. in, the, And I was in the movie industry too. And, and I read a lot of scripts and stuff. I cannot much watch more movies or more entertainment than an hour a day. I can. I, it's, I'm getting bored. I'm getting, because creating is what we are. We are collaborative creator animals of nature. That's why we are self-conscious. Because I can teach you to bang down these this three trees and to build a hut. And the reason why you are self-aware, and I am, so I can teach you that we are collaborative creator animals like New York, Singapore, Apple, Google. We create together. And in that collaborative thing, that's why we are self-conscious. And that's why we love to, to, to create something. And when people find out that a part of your expression to find you are one of 8 billion is to express yourself by creating at least art or a house or whatever, or a podcast, 
you'll find more of who you are. And that is a fulfill. And then you feel fulfilled. And the fulfillment is because everybody, everything, everybody is fulfilled by something else. Is the feedback loop emotionally that you, Nadja, or Michael is on their track. And in this, in this case right now, we are both on the same track. I'm not thinking about my dog or doing this or that. I'm, I'm being 100% here with you. I'm not saying, oh, how can I say something to him that I hide? No, I give you 100%, you know, right now. And you give me 100% right now too. And that putting us in, the, in, the, in, in our uh, attention in the, the moment, because we are, it, it, we, we are resonating with talking to each other and talking about the subject that we talk about, we feel fulfilled. We're not thinking about, oh, I have to pay my rent tomorrow or whatever. We are feeling fulfilled. And fulfillment is a feedback loop of uh, that you are at the right track. And I will tell you all this. We have too many progr programs and too many services in this world. And nobody has how many p things you get for free that you don't have the time even to look at. How many emails do you just delete because you're not w willing to do it? It's just we have too many products and we need to find more ways to find ourselves. And that's why we need to create, you know, people uh, want to express themselves versus, you know, selling themselves. It's not about the set because, because when you focus all on the product, on the art product, then you're not creating that. And you're creating distort because you say, I'm creating a bike that sells. I'm creating an artwork that sells versus I'm creating the best that I can do and be discovered. See, that's, 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 uh, and that's why when you said, you know, are you afraid of fear? No, the, you can create uh, tons of products and we have already too many products and services that nobody can use. So what's the poor purpose of creating more? We, we can, and see, this is what I would, I would AI use too. Can AI help us that, for example, you and I, they're just by, by chance met each other, would have met each other by choice. You know, by say, hey, I wanna meet somebody that I can talk to with that has the same perception of AI than I have. This, this is what I was using AI and not, I want to be so good that the guy wants to talk to me because I have such a great resume. That's bullshit. You know, I want you to, I want to get the people together. It's about the human centricity. Always Absolutely. That is the power, not the system, not the system relevance. You know, I don't want to talk to Elon Musk. I don't want to talk to Jeff Bezos. I want to talk to you that I can discover this guy has the same experience that I have. That is way more interesting than any system great per person. Right. And you know everything from the system great person. You know, you know it all, you know? What is that to learn? Absolutely. I think that what you're saying makes a lot of sense. Imagine if you tell me that, oh, you, uh, I imagine like instead of talking to you, I'm talking to an AI. Would that conversation be interesting to me? Would I be excited about connecting with an no. AI and discussing the same topic? I don't know. Probably not. Yeah. It's the same like when I, I love the game of chess. I play chess and I enjoy yeah. it. And I yeah. also enjoy watching it. So there are some YouTube matches from humans versus a human mm -hmm. that I really enjoy. But if, if you tell me, watch an AI playing against a human or an AI playing against AI, yeah. I probably won't enjoy watching because I don't relate to AI. I don't have the same emotions, the same psyche, the same feeling to that machine. I have, though, if I see another player, another human playing another human and they make a mistake, yeah. I can feel the tension because I make mistakes sometimes when I'm playing. And I think watching yeah. an AI playing an AI or an AI playing a human is very unhuman like because, you know, AI are programmed not to make mistakes. So they most likely won't make mistakes. And, and even if they do, the mistakes are on a different level, on a different wavelength. Mm -hmm. So, 
this leads me to the last question I have for you, Michael, and it's been an hour full of um, amazing uh, nuggets of wisdom. My last question to you is that I have young people. Um, I know I know someone, Fernando, if you're listening, um, he, he want to become a writer. He loves writing. He loves poetry. Mm -hmm. He loves art. But now I want to give him advice on whether he should pursue this career or not, knowing that AI can write and AI is going to get better at writing and AI is going to get better at poetry. I mean, look at all the poetry that it can produce, look at all the music it can produce. What would you say to Fernando? What would you say to someone who is young and who want to pursue a career in art or, or writing? What would you tell them in this age? Would you look at somebody, a concert played by machines? You wouldn't ever go into a concert hall to see machines playing either. It's all that you, you want to see humans handling a, a, a struggle, a, 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 you know, like chess playing, and you want to do this. You know, you want, you want to see the expansion of humans, the discipline of humans, and that's very, uh, very uh, uh, satisfying and fulfilling because you, we are all part of each other. And so when, when the concert goes through a very hard piece, a, a, a violin player, you feel the joy, that, 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 that unbelievable limitlessness of that. And when machines play with each other, they, are, they have no soul. They're not connected with us. So what I say to your friend about art is, I would say, be aware. Okay, this is what I would say. Um, I would say to all young kids, I would say, you are one of 8 billion people with your own view of life. And the reason why is because you show and you are shown by other humans more of who you are. So the way to finding God, nature, the wisdom is by interacting and dancing, dancing more with other human and play with other human. So when you are a writer, write down your experience, right? I started with notes and I'm not, you know, I'm neurodiverse, so I'm not a good writer or anything, but I think I just took notes. I said, when I talked to Naja, this, this happened, you know, I'm, I'm making a note when, if I'm writing, then make notes of your life, put it in the computer, write it on, um, I did a lot on my voice memo in my phone, uh, you know, write down your awareness that you have and then put them into words, which makes you uh, hone your own voice because uh, you and I don't feel like your friend, right? We don't gonna feel fulfilled with, or an aware, don't have an awareness like he has. So everybody's awareness is very valuable and it's very unique. So, you know, have the awareness, talking on a voice recorder, make some notes and then put it in a computer and then edit it. And then just make notes, make, make a notepad and just keep writing whatever. And it shouldn't be, it should be fun. It shouldn't be, no, I have to do this. No, you don't have to do this. If you don't feel like doing it, then you shouldn't be a writer. So, so try to observe and not judge, but observe, observe every moment, be in the moment and observe it and then express it, you know? And if you're an artist, you express it and say, oh, this felt like la, 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 or that felt like, <laughs> you know, or, you know, put something to it. You don't have to just write words, you know, write a thing. Take a piece of paint, paint it on thing. Use, I say a lot of kids are very energetic, right? They have a lot of energy because their spirit doesn't know where to go. So I said, just take some paint, express yourself, sing, dance, do sports, express yourself. But not that you're the best sports guy, not that you're the best artist. That's the problem because you pull away from yourself, express yourself how it comes to you. You know, write yourself how it comes to you, not to be the best swimmer, the best athlete, the best thing. That's where you push away from who you are. 
And you and the all value is that you are one of eight billion. With a view to you use that and transfer that view and that feeling that fulfills you and that said, man, I couldn't even handle this. It was so awesome or it was horrible. Just write it and express it. Then you find more of who you are. And the more you find it, the more you find how beautiful the world is and life is and how, the easy, how easy it is, especially when you dance with other humans. When it doesn't come a competition, which is system relevant, but it becomes a dance. And even if you, if I don't hug everybody, I'm not dancing. No, but if I see a pure person that I don't like, I, I, it's still a part of me. It's not, it's not like, or if I like a person, it's still a part of me. It's both a part of me. And I see them all helping me to find more of who I am. And there's only winning. There is no losing in this, in this proposition. And if you have to make money, you have to make money, you know, to live for some, from something and become somebody that works with humans, probably. Like I was always in the hospitality business. So then, then do that to get it. But, but make money to, to actually afford your hobby. Michael Magroch, thank you so much for, for being here. Thank you, Nacho. It was a pleasure. Thank you for giving me a canvas to paint. <laughs>